Daniel's Lot um, came about um, as I was driving back from a baseball game in Sanford, Florida. Um, the story is kind of semi-autobiographical because um, some of the things that I wrote about in the script actually happened to me and the, the um, first thing was that uh, God actually spoke to me and told me to erect a cross in my front yard, which I did within two days. At the same time, I was working on uh, uh, my third novel, which is unpublished along with the other first two. So if there's any publishers out there looking for some good, clean, cozy mystery novels, see me. Um, but as I, I was working on that, when I got this message and I took some time out and built the cross and put it in my front yard. And um, I was at a point in this, in this book that I was working on where one of the characters was describing to the uh, hero detective person um, what the swindler, the uh, antagonist in the story looked like and just off of my fingers comes um, the little old lady says, well, he looked like Radar O'Reilly. And I, actually I stopped typing and I said, Radar O'Reilly? Who even thinks about him? And I you know, finished up for that day and then, then the story and then the idea of a movie um, started resonating and I, I always get pictures and put them up on a bulletin board when I'm writing just to have something to refer to and I pulled down a picture of Gary Berghoff uh, because I was going to get back to that throughout this this uh, book that I was writing and you know I usually take the first picture and I don't even read the article that it is and and you know the Lord was tugging on me again and he said no you need another picture and I, I actually said no I don't need another picture this is fine but I went and got another picture and for some reason and I never ever read the articles that the pictures are attached to when I pull them off the internet and for some reason I went ahead and read this article about Gary Berghoff and how strong uh, of a Christian he was and how important um, his walk and and the word is and has been in his life and and it just become a became a um, a wellspring uh, that that erupted and and uh, so I met with Apostle uh, Matt Shaw and Pastor Pam Shaw and proposed that that our church do a movie that other churches were doing movies and and I proposed that we do a movie and and it just took off from there I think um, I think God has had his hand on this project every day and from the first day from bef before it even started. So his presence was always there. We always called his presence onto the set or onto into the recording studio or any place that we were working. Um, but the, the, thing, the thing that I remember um, was that our needs were always met. I mean, we had absolutely no budget for this movie. And we had lots and lots of challenges. Um, camera, camera people were challenges. Uh, uh, crew people were challenges because you know very few people had had any even peripheral experience on working uh, with a project like this. And so, so we had a lot of challenges. But but the thing was that that God met all of our needs. I mean, at every juncture, he met all of our needs and not just met them. He was exceedingly abundantly above anything that we could think or imagine he was there. One example would be when we went to Connecticut to film Gary Berghoff's scenes. I, I had been so busy filming the scenes here in Florida that I had very little time to make any arrangements. As a matter of fact, it was like a mm, three or four days before we were actually heading to the airport to get on the plane uh, that some people in Connecticut, I had sent out a lot of feelers, but I got no response. But some people in Connecticut um, 
responded. There was one church, and then there was one individual, and that was the only two uh, responses that, that we got, but it was exactly what we needed. I mean, the, the one individual had some experience in, in movie making and uh, was with us every minute that we were there. When we arrived in, in town uh, till the morning we left, he was with us every minute. Uh, he actually operated the camera some. He got props. He got locations. He got people. Um, so I mean, it, it was absolutely God. And then the and then the church people, um, the First Church of Heartland, Connecticut. They they were just amazing. I mean, they fed us. We didn't we didn't ask for food, but they fed us. They got us some locations, um, and you know it was exactly what we needed and and so you know we know and we give the glory and the praise to god because we know that's who it was gary Berghoff, radar o'reilly um, as i mentioned earlier came to me while i was working on a completely different project um, and so i set about contacting him um, trying to locate him and not going through any agencies or anything like that. I wanted, because this project was so uh, personal that I wanted to go and get directly to him. And so I located a few addresses that I was pretty confident would get to him. And so I sent letters and, and actually I sent three letters to three different addresses. And somehow I came across a, uh, post office box in Connecticut. Um, so I sent, I sent a fourth letter, maybe two or three days after the first one, uh, to that post office box. And, and about two, three days later, um, my phone rang. He said, this is Gary Berghoff. Uh, I received your letter. I'm retired. Um, I don't do anything anymore. Um, but thanks for thinking of me and I, you know, I'd be glad to talk to you about your project, but I just don't work anymore. And so I was elated and I called him right away. I said, I, I guess you finally called me because uh, you thought I w you would continue getting letters to every place that you ever went. And, and he laughed at that and, and we talked a little bit about it and I told him about the project. I told him we had absolutely no money, um, but you know, it was something that, that, that was, the time was right for. And he said, well, uh, after, you know, after we talked for 15 or 20 minutes, he, he just said, well, the, one, another interesting thing was, he said, my, my name has no marquee value. Uh, and I said, well, and that is true. Um, to the 14 people in America that don't have a television and to the 140 people uh, throughout the world that don't have a television, then yes, his name would not be well known. But to anybody that has a television, any place in the world, any time of the day, you turn it on, there's MASH, and there's Radar O'Reilly, and there's Gary Berghoff. So, um, and I was straight up with him that, that uh, yes, I wanted him and I wanted his name to, to help uh, um, escalate the, the the movie or give it a leg up and so he said go ahead and send him the script and and he would read it and if and he would pray and if the Lord directed him to do it he would do it and um, within I overnighted it to him and within um, oh like two or three days he called back and he said you know I don't I don't know what to, to say except the Lord told me to do this and and uh, he was just amazing he's been amazing he continues to be amazing he's an inspiration to us um he, you know he he says we helped him but but he helped us tremendously and and i i think uh when people see the movie they'll they'll enjoy him very much and and i hope this opens up a new avenue a second career for him i mean radar o'reilly was great but but as a, an actor for the lord Gary Berghoff um, can make some major contributions.